let's look for a moment at who Jesus is over the destiny of Earth's peoples. Paul said when he was preaching before the philosophers on Mars Hill in Athens, he said, from one man, God has created all the nations throughout the whole earth, and he decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations, that is, for earth's peoples, to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us, for in him, we, that is, all of earth's peoples, we live and move and exist. But then Paul went on and said, now he commands everyone everywhere, that's all of earth's peoples, to repent of their sins and to turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man that he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Isaiah 42 says about Jesus, the, uh, God says, I, I'm backing him to the hill. I bathed him with my spirit, with my life. He, he'll set everything right among the nations, that is, earth's peoples. He won't be stopped until he, he's finished his work to set things right on earth. He goes on to say he'll be a lighthouse to the nations, opening blind eyes, releasing prisoners from dungeons, emptying the dark prisons. This is Jesus over the destiny of earth's peoples. This is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's Cape Town, South Africa. And uh, there was a huge meeting that took place there not long ago that brought together over 3,000 leaders in world evangelization from over 200 nations of the world. And during that gathering, that consultation, they learned, among other things, that currently there are over 2 billion people who have no knowledge of Christ and no one like them, near them, to even begin to tell them. They learned that one out of five people on earth live among just 50 major unreached people groups and that the total population of just those 50 groups where the gospel has not yet come is over 1 billion people. They learned that none of those groups have a self-sustaining indigenous church to even begin to reach them. They learned that uh, 43 of those groups are found in what we often think of as closed countries, that is, closed to what we think of as formal missionaries. 22 of the groups are Muslim, 18 are Hindu, 5 are Buddhist, 5 are ethnic religions. And then they learned that one out of every penny of, of the dollar of Christian resources, just one penny out of every dollar is spent trying to reach this mass of earth's peoples who have never even heard of Jesus. So where do we see the reign of Christ over that whole situation? Well, they also learned at this consultation that Christ's global mission team consists of 43,000 different denominations. Those are all separate Basis of operations for the spread of the gospel. That right now, worldwide, there are almost 5 million congregations from which the gospel can be sent into the nations. There are 29,000 Christian service agencies, almost 5,000 foreign sending mission agencies, uh, over 12 million national Christian workers in the church around the world, uh, over 400,000 foreign full-time missionary workers among the nations of the world. Jesus has been very active, and he has a tremendous team to continue his mission to the nations. For example, here's a team of Korean missionaries. Do you know where they're working? They're working in Moscow. Or, for example, here is a, a, a front-page headline of Open Doors magazine a couple of years ago that talks about a massive Christian youth rally in the Egyptian desert that brought an estimated 25,000 people to Christ. Did you hear about that any time when it happened? Or let me take as one example one of the most effective missionary outreaches anywhere in the world. It's called Every Home for Christ. It's based in Colorado Springs, but working in well over 100 nations of the world. These are the ones who are giving leaders, my dear friends, Dick and Dee Eastman. And uh, th they like to say that every day their workers visit more than 200,000 homes. That's every day. They have reached out to over one and a half billion homes in the last 66 years, they have seen over 116 million people respond to the gospel. Last year alone, they reached over 84 million homes. And so, as they like to say in this front page article of their magazine, it's just one series of miracles after another. What they do is they go from house to house. They do it in major, what we would call closed countries of the world. And they talk to people about Jesus. 
and they share with them the gospel. They leave behind literature and they give them a way to get into correspondence courses so they can begin to learn more about Jesus. And then they begin to establish not what they call churches, but what they call Christ groups in places where as a, as a Muslim or as a Hindu, it might be very dangerous for you to be a, an open Christian, but you can meet together in little clusters called Christ groups. And as they say, there's not a single door that cannot be opened to the gospel. Now, that's the story of just one of over 400,000 mission agencies. Just think what Jesus can do as he reigns over the destiny of earth's peoples. Earth's peoples are his inheritance, according to Psalm 2. In turn, he has become their destiny with the final word on the outcome of all humankind. No legitimate activity of human existence escapes his claims. Christ points to every square foot of earth and declares, that is mine. And the same is true of every one of earth's nations and peoples. He says, in essence, they are mine. Christ's reign engages every human domain finance and commerce, entertainment, education, industry, labor, arts and sciences, family and culture. Christ's reign encompasses all of the conditions of the human race, the least socially, culturally, economically, and above all, the lost morally and spiritually. As he claimed in his Luke 4 manifesto taken from Isaiah 61, even so right now, his ministry from the throne continues to press forward for justice for the oppressed and deliverance for the poor. He's concerned for all of those who are without God and without hope, physically, socially, economically, but above all, spiritually. At times, his reign entails divine judgments upon the world and upon the wicked, potentially manifested in all realms of human existence, Natural, political, economic, social, even spiritual. Just compare some of the Exodus judgments with some of the judgments we read about in the book of Revelation. Also, he actively sets limits on both the scope and duration of all human activity, past, present, future. Christ's kingship, however, is becoming increasingly visible among the peoples of the earth as he penetrates the nations with multiplied manifestations of the triumphs of his grace through the impact of the gospel on both people and peoples. Through the spread of the good news of King Jesus, leading to the planting of congregations among every ethnicity, language, and nation, his reign continues to be revealed and released in whole new ways over and over and over. You know, we can talk about the landing of D-Day and how they established a, a, a beachhead, a base of operations. Well, Christians serve as ambassadors of Christ's kingdom as we establish new churches that provide the king beachheads, which become his bases of operations for his reign to become tangible and active on the ground. This is how his saving purpose continues to advance among the over two billion who as yet have no knowledge of him and no one like them near them to even begin to tell them, but the nations are not abandoned. Christ is actively at work everywhere to reconcile all things back to the Father by his blood shed on the cross. He is bringing forth from all peoples a multitude that cannot be numbered to follow and serve him forever in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and to the greater glory of his Father, one God worshiped world without end. And so we read in Revelation 7 that there, John says, in front of me was a huge crowd of people. Why, there were so many that no one could even count them. And they came from every nation and tribe and people and language. And the Lamb who's at the center of the area around the throne, he will be their shepherd. He is Lord over their destiny. 